Hello my friends, how are you today? I hope you're doing well. Today I want to give you my top 10 recommendations for the best Ray Bradbury short stories. And not only do I want to give you these recommendations, but I also want to share with you some appreciation for one of my favourite writers, a grandfather of sorts. Ray Bradbury is the writer's writer. If you ask a writer working today, not just in the field of speculative literature, science fiction and fantasy, who influenced them, it wouldn't be a surprise if they said Ray Bradbury. Indeed, the manufacturers of the future, the engineers, the astronauts and scientists, the men and women who launch us into space, they are endlessly influenced by Ray Bradbury themselves. Too. Ray Bradbury, who was never formally educated, instead gave himself an education in the public library and spent a decade living in the library and then went on to implore writers today to live in the library. He's also the writer's writer because Ray Bradbury essentially does everything. He's pulp, but he's also poetry. He's poetic, pulpy prophecy. He comes up with these wonderful thought experiments. You'll see where Black Mirror originated from. Indeed, there wouldn't be shows like Black Mirror without Ray Bradbury. Not only does he come up with these wonderful thought experiments, but he's endlessly meditative, endlessly poetic. He's the poet of prophecy and pulp. He was published in the pulp magazines, the popular magazines at the time, but to discard him is to do him a great disservice because no one that I can think of writing in the 20th century connected more eminently with a sense of childlike wonder. Most people grow up and they ditch that childlike sense of wonder, but they keep the immaturity. Most people never mature. Ray Bradbury did both. He refined his artistic technique, stuck with it, and ended up being endlessly influential, and he kept that childlike sense of wonder. The childlike sense of wonder that makes one look up at the stars and go, Wow. Indeed, if you read a Ray Bradbury story, they are filled with the elements. They're filled with godlike powers beyond our control. The sun, moon, stars, lightning, rain, endless rain. These are the themes and preoccupations. These are the symbols of Ray Bradbury. Learning to read these symbols is learning to appreciate the power of Ray Bradbury. He's one of those few writers that still has verve and gusto. He's a visionary, and though he may have got the details incorrect, indeed, if you look at the narratives of Philip K. Dick, if you look at things like Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, um, the future should look very different by now. But Bradbury did get the broad sweep and the philosophy completely right. He was writing in the wake of the development of the atomic bomb, and what did that mean? That meant anxiety. That meant fear of the apocalypse. That meant fear of all-out destruction. But his short stories are a warning to us today. When I recommend my favourite short stories and the ones that, indeed, I think best display his mastery of the form, you will see that these are warning calls to us today. They are still contemporary. He got it right. The details might be different, but he got it right. He knew where we were heading, and though he paints a dystopian picture, and though he's looking through the prism of a Freudian hell, there is a strain of optimism running through Ray Bradbury's stories. This strain of optimism that says, yes, we are on the cusp of destroying ourselves, and we can destroy ourselves, and we can destroy each other and the planet with the touch of a button, but we won't. We won't. We will survive, we will prosper, and love will conquer all. I read that when I read Ray Bradbury. I believe him to be an endless optimist. Now let me recommend you 10 great short stories from Ray Bradbury. I'll talk about my ordering system and the rationale that went into ordering them and how to rank your own short stories and novels at another time if you're interested. But the rationale is basically this. First, it is based on influence, it's based on deployment of artifice, like how well does he render the story, and it's also just a little bit, a little dash of my own personal enjoyment, because you have to have that as well. So this is very much reflective of some of my personal favourite short stories. Are there many any more beyond this list that you will fall in love with? Absolutely. But this list is for people who may not have come to Ray Bradbury in any significant way yet and would just like 10 good starter stories to get them on their journey. Then you can start diving into his longer narratives like Fahrenheit 451, Dandelion, Wine, Something Wicked This Way Comes, and indeed The Martian Chronicles, which is actually just a collection of short stories with a little bit of a scaffold to link it together. If I can get you picking up The Illustrated Man, which is my favourite short story collection of all time, I have worn through so many copies of that great book. If I can get you picking up that alone, I will have achieved my job here today. But if you want my recommendation for a great anthology of Ray Bradbury's short stories, A Hundred Tales, indeed many of the ones that I'm going to mention here today, I would recommend either this one that you can see here, that's Stories Volume 1, or pick up the gorgeous Everyman edition of Ray Bradbury's tales. They have the same stories in them. Those are my recommendations for you. And just a quick note for you lovers of literature before we dive into the list of the top 10. If you enjoy this video, 
Stay tuned and keep your eyes peeled for an upcoming episode of the Hardcore Literature Podcast where we're going to do a deep dive into the short stories and fiction of Ray Bradbury. Indeed, if you want even more than that, we're going to be reading Ray Bradbury along with writers like Raoul Dahl, D.H. Lawrence, James Joyce even, there's going to be a good mix, in an upcoming four-part lecture series spread across four weeks called The Art of the Modern Short Story. I'll talk more about the syllabus at the end of this video, but that's going to be available at patreon.com forward slash hardcore literature. Indeed, go check it out right now. We're reading tons of great stuff. The discussion is wonderful. Check out the syllabus and you are warmly welcome to the club if you wish to do deep reads of the great books with a great group. Now, the best short story that Ray Bradbury ever wrote, in my opinion, is The Velt. This is an example of what I was talking about, where even though the details might be a little bit different, although they're not completely different, and I, to be honest, I think we're heading that way, his picture of a dystopian future is scarily accurate today. The story originally appeared, entitled The World the Children Made, appearing in September the 23rd, 1950, in the Saturday Evening Post, and then was republished again a year later in my favourite short story collection, The Illustrated Man. Now, I'm going to be really light on summaries when we're talking about these books, because in all honesty I don't want to spoil anything, I don't like people summarising things like short stories and I actually think it's better for you to go read it and then we can have a chat about it and unpick it and talk about the things that Ray Bradbury wanted to sort of put in our mind. But essentially it's VR, virtual reality taken to the absolute extreme. What would it look like if there was a playroom, you could have a playroom in your house that was all expansive, all encompassing, 360 degrees, that produced smells and sounds and, and textures and feels, and you could furnish it by your imagination. The playroom becomes the veldt, the plains of Africa. Oh yeah, Dolby sound, three-dimensional tapes. Laser images? You know, I still can't get used to this. It's a terrifying short story and you can cut the anxiety in the atmosphere of the narrative with a knife. And this shows Ray Bradbury as being a master of the twist, the twist narrative. This story elicits a lot of different conflicting emotions in me, but the ever-present theme that I engage with in this story is the idea of who is raising your children. Indeed, we can look around today and we can see parents who defer their parenthood to iPads and mobile screens and the television. And what happens when you try to take that away from them? What happens when you try to yank their digital father or mother out of their hands? They're not gonna like it. This story raises some great questions, it's endlessly rereadable, and it has that Bradbury strain of poeticism running through it. It's colorful, you can feel it, you can see it, it's all around you, it's a great short story, and I would implore you to read it Reread it and heed its call. Let's get into number two. Now, indeed, I love The Velt, but my personal favourite short story might be A Sound of Thunder. First published in Collier's Magazine in June 28th, 1952, and appearing a year later in the 1953, The Golden Apples of the Sun. A comic book version also appeared in 1954, the number 25 issue of EC Comics' Weird Science fantasy. This is a wonderful time machine narrative and it connects Bradbury really well to the pioneering authors of such narratives like H.G. Wells that came before him and inspired him. What would happen if you could go back in time on a dinosaur safari? You can go all the way back in time just to hunt and shoot a dinosaur. Again, I'm not going to get into the details of the plot because I want you to enjoy it. This is a story that later resurfaced in the Ray Bradbury mystery theatre. Indeed, The Vel also appeared in that TV show and it's actually really good. It's a bit Dated, but it still holds up. We kill only animals that have no future. Those that will never mate again. Mm. When you first read this story, you might think that Bradbury is plugging into this idea of the butterfly effect, and it's a bit cliche. Oh, okay, it's a pretty cool idea, he's doing the butterfly effect. Well, actually, he was one of the peddlers of this idea when it first came out. I'm not sure if it completely originated with Bradbury or if he took it from another writer around the same time and made it popular. But at that time, people weren't talking about the butterfly effect. Basically, the wings of a butterfly can result in an earthquake that changes the course of history. You know the theory. Ray Bradbury was at the cusp of making that idea ever more popular. Indeed, A Sound of Thunder is a great short story for writers to study, and it is a great representative of his technique of the pensée, 
What Bradbury would do when he was writing stories if he wanted to drudge up his subconscious and come up with ideas is he would make lists of nouns, just lists of nouns, the skeleton, the circus, and he would go on and on and on, and then he would see if he could write a story around it, but he would just start by descriptions, poetic descriptions. And in this short story, I think it originated because he was writing a ponce, a little poetic snapshot about a T-Rex. And I want to read this to you in full and I hope you enjoy it. It makes it into the story and then the, a narrative sort of shaped around it. Listen to this because it's, it's beautiful. It's a great example of what I might call poetic pulp. It came on great oiled, resilient, striding legs. It towered 30 feet above half of the trees, a great evil god, folding its delicate watchmaker's claws close to its oily reptilian chest. Each lower leg was a piston, a thousand pounds of white bone, sunk in thick ropes of muscle, sheathed over in a gleam of pebbled skin like the mail of a terrible warrior. Each thigh was a ton of meat, ivory and steel mesh, and from the great breathing cage of the upper body, those two delicate arms dangled out front arms with hands which might pick up and examine men like toys, while the snake neck coiled, and the head itself a ton of sculptured stone, lifted easily upon the sky, its mouth gaped, exposing a fence of teeth like daggers, its eyes rolled ostrich eggs, empty of all expression save hunger. It closed its mouth in a death grin, it ran, its pelvic bones crushing aside trees and bushes, its taloned feet clawing damp earth, leaving prints six inches deep wherever it settled its weight. It ran with a gliding ballet step, far too poised and balanced for its ten tons. It moved into a sunlit arena, warily, its beautifully reptile hands feeling the air. How beautiful is that? That's in The Sound of Thunder. Highly recommend that, that short story. My next recommendation for a great short story by Ray Bradbury is the story entitled There Will Come Soft Rains. This is an example of something that's very Bradbury-esque because he was inspired by a poem by Sarah Teasdale and he wrote a narrative around it. This is a story that has no human characters. It just depicts a house, a lone house, and the workings and whirrings of its mechanics as it stands alone, as a lone survivor after a nuclear holocaust has hit California. First published in 1953 as a one-page story in Collier's magazine, and then making it into The Martian Chronicles as a fix-up narrative, Bradbury regarded this as the one story that displayed the essence of his craft. And recognising the power of meditating upon the endless potential of humanity to usher in its own destruction, the Pulitzer awarded Bradbury with a special prize on the back of this short story. It's very short, you can read it very quickly, and it's endlessly affecting. Highly, highly recommended. I even see this short story as a companion piece to the Velt. So you can read those two together and they complement each other very well. Bradbury was inspired to write this story after he saw a picture of the inside of a house in Hiroshima with the shadows of its now deceased occupants on the wall. Next up is a story called The Small Assassin, which, when you start reading this story, reads like a narrative about postpartum depression, but then it very quickly devolves into a reverse Oedipal complex story, that Freudian idea. What happens if you spin that on its head? The tension in this story and the terror is deployed masterfully. Bradbury wrote and published this story in November 1946 in the Dime Mystery magazine and was later collected in the short story anthology Dark Carnival. This is another one where I'm not going to tell you the details because it would ruin it. I would just implore you to go read it and indeed up until this point you could probably have a really nice afternoon sampling each of these short stories. The next short story that I want to recommend to you is The Lake published in 1944 in Weird Tales. Bradbury talks about this short story and the writing of it, the conception and the creativity that went into it in his biographical Zen and the Art of Writing, which I strongly implore you to pick up, especially if you're a writer. It's really motivating and it's just a nice companion if you find yourself having to get up early and start clocking those word counters each day. Bradbury's a nice guide to have on your journey. Apparently the lake was written in two hours, 
And he had built up to write in the lake. He'd put a decade in of hard graft and work becoming a writer, but this was the story that made him think that he'd finally cracked it. He'd finally written a great story. So I would say that this is probably one of Bradbury's favourite short stories. And indeed, it is a little masterpiece. It's not science fiction. It shows Bradbury as being really capable of going down a completely different avenue. It's a melancholy memory, a melancholy snapshot of memory, an ode to the untimely passing of youth. Indeed, it's very sad, and you could actually tear up or full-on cry reading this story. Again, I'm not going to say anything about it. It's very, very short. I would implore you to check it out. That's The Lake. The Pedestrian is my next recommendation for you. Published in 1951 in an issue of The Reporter and then included in the collection The Golden Apples of the Sun. But The Pedestrian's really short and it's born out of experience again. All of these short stories are a little piece of Bradbury's soul and they usually originate from his experience where he kind of thinks, oh, this odd thing happened. It wouldn't be too many steps down the line the slippery slope wouldn't have to be greased up that much before we get to this outlandish situation. Again, I'm not going to tell you what happened. It's just born out of a little kernel of Bradbury's experience. What happens when you're walking through a village at night? And as you walk down the street, you're just peering into people's houses. And the street is empty because everybody's glued to the tube. Everybody's glued to the television. To the point where walking out and about is the weird thing not being glued to the TV screen. That's what the story is all about and it's endlessly relevant to us today. Let's get into the next recommendation. The next recommendation is Kaleidoscope, which is included in The Illustrated Man. Seriously, pick up The Illustrated Man. I'll drop a link in the description below so you can grab the copy I recommend. This is a narrative that explores astronauts hurtling away from each other through space, getting ready to burn up like a match upon entry back into the planet's atmosphere. It's creepy, but it makes you cherish the life that you're living and makes you want to be, believe it or not, a better person. My next recommendation for you is a story entitled The Long Rain, once again published in The Illustrated Man. Bradbury writes nature, the assault of nature with such power. This narrative follows a bunch of spacemen on an expedition through the planet Venus to try and get to the Sun Dome. And the description of the relentless pounding of the rain, the water torture that they are enduring, that is suffocating, you'll feel waterlogged and you'll be in desperate need of a towel by the time that you get to the end of this story. My next recommendation, bit of an odd one, is simply the meditations that run through The Illustrated Man. The Illustrated Man collects together a bunch of Bradbury's best short stories that were published in all the different pulp magazines, but he also gets a narrative running through where the stories are essentially coming alive in the ink of the tattoos of this Illustrated Man. The poeticism in these little short vignettes is beautiful, worth picking up the book for alone. And my final recommendation is called Boys Raise Giant Mushrooms in Your Cellar. This is a fun one. This is about an invasion and it's kind of in the old style of hammy horror. It would have influenced writers like Stephen King and R.L. Stein, but it also presents an interesting thought experiment for us today. An invasion can take us over without even raising a weapon. And there we have it. Let me know your favourite Ray Bradbury short stories. Which ones did I leave off? Which ones didn't I include? Indeed, if you've read some of the ones that I recommended today, what did you think of them? And look forward to the modern short story lecture series, The Art of the Modern Short Story. I'm going to run through a prospective syllabus very quickly in the first week. It's called Sick Twists in Post-War Lit, and we'll be studying Ray Bradbury's The Velt next to Wild Dahl's Skin and Shirley Jackson's The Lottery. Great short story. In the second week, entitled Minimalism, Dialogue and Disillusionment, we'll be looking at Ernest Hemingway's Hills Like White Elephants, Raymond Carver's Will You Please Be Quiet Please, and Dennis Johnson's Emergency. In the third lecture, we'll be looking at the Southern Gothic, by virtue of Flannery O'Connor's A Good Man Is Hard To Find, and William Faulkner's A Rose For Emily. In week four, it's entitled Freudian Nightmares, and we'll be reading D. H. Lawrence's The Rocking Horse Winner, and James Joyce's Evelyn. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe because that tells me to keep making more content. And if you want to read the great books as part of a great community of book lovers, then please do check out patreon.com forward slash hardcore literature and you will be warmly welcomed to the club. Thank you very much for watching. Happy reading. See you soon.